scrunchies. <laughs> it's story time with Mr. Steve. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna read books. I don't know how to play this. We're gonna have a lot of fun. It's story time. Theme song. Hi everybody, Mr. Steve here. We're here at Loveworks here at the Ball Pit. We've got another Raising Little Leader story time. Very excited about this. Maxwell's here with me. My 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 other little one's right there in all sweats. I don't think we'll be able to get her out of the ball pit. She might just stay there the entire time. So we've got a very exciting story time today. Very excited. Yeah. Hope you'll join us. My wife is making me pigtails. I have no idea. It has, um... I want a scrunchie. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. I love my look. Boom. Scrunchies. Ah, who put that mustache on Maxwell? Whoever did is probably very attractive and smart. Hi kids, Mr. Steve here. Today at Raising Little Leaders Storytime, I figure it's about time that we actually turn them into actual leaders. So instead of reading kids' books, we're going to be reading this, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. By the end of story time, the words of Robert Kiyosaki is going to turn everyone into a businessman. Kids need, yeah, leaders are readers, and if we're really going to turn you kids into leaders, let's be serious about it. So today we're reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. It says right here, as narrated by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, it's called a book. It's really weird. Okay, we're gonna talk about, we need to, yes, it's important to be nice to our friends and love our friends and love the people in our class and our neighbors and everybody. But today, we're gonna talk about how important it is to love ourselves. Have you ever heard of that? Well, hallelujah. But what you're gonna do, is you're gonna get a piece of construction paper from the table. You're gonna put your hand on it, and you're gonna use a marker, and you're gonna trace, mom and dad will help you. Trace your hand, and then you're gonna pick out three words from this list that mom and dad are gonna help us read. Yes. We're gonna pick out three words. How many? Mom, you help me draw my hand. Three words, and we're gonna cut them out. Three words that we feel like that say something about us the most, okay? So we feel like we're really smart, or we're really polite, or we're really kind, okay? We're
For someone who looks like that, Ronald Durkin is not nice. Looks, no. I'm gonna call him uh, Steve Buscemi Babies. You're in no position, Ronald Durkin. Molly Lou Mellon took out her pennies, stacked ten high on her teeth, and smiled as big as day. All the children smiled with glee, and Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. Oh, this book is not fiction, so this book is a true story? Yeah, this is a 100% true story about the life of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's a fact. That is a fact. On the third day of school, Ronald Durkins said, You sound like a sick duck. Honk, honk. That Ronald Durkin is not a nice guy. Molly a quack so clear and strong that it made Ronald Durkin somersault backwards, hit his head, and have to go to the nurse. All the children cried with joy to be free of Ronald Durkin for the rest of the afternoon. And once again, Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. Foolish. Everybody give me a big loud quack. On the fourth day of school, Ronald Durkin said that she had made the snowflake all wrong. But Molly Lou Mellon opened up her paper and revealed the most beautiful snowflake of all. All the children ooed and awed. Everybody go, ooh. Everybody go, ah. Even Ronald Durkin ooed and awed. smiled at her. Aw, looks like Ronald Durkin is finally being friends with Molly Lou Mellis. I can appreciate, I can appreciate Ronald Durkin for dressing like my grandfather. That's for people to see the story. I like how she took over Facebook. I like that. She took over Facebook. It was the you story. That night, Molly Lou Mellon took out a pencil and a paper and wrote a letter to her grandma. Dear Grandma, I wanted to tell you everything. I wanted to tell you that everything you told me was exactly right. Also, your cat is way too big. It's not a good idea to own a cat that's bigger than you. You know? Like, that's weird. So like, you're this big, imagine if you had a cat that was like this big, right? That's scary. I'm just saying you should watch out about your cat. You, you have a cat that tastes like biscuits? Oh, biscuit and keto. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. My my wife is on the keto diet, actually, <laughs> right now. Crazy? Oh, yeah. That's a crazy. Love, Molly Lou Mellon. And that's the end of that story. Yay! To so listen, in the back, on those tables, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> on the tables in the back, there's this piece of paper, and it says, Happy Valentine's Day, dear blank. Whose name are you going to write right there? Wow, you guys are so smart. You're going to write your name right there. She has a little note for you, and then you need to pick three things. You are blank, blank, and blank. Three things that you like about yourself.
these kids are attacking me. Well, that's the end of another story time. Hope you liked it. Hope you had fun. And you learned something as well. I'm proud with how well my uh, pigtails stayed in. The scrunchies worked very well. Bye, guys. <laughs>